Hello, everyone, and uh, let's uh, start my talk, which will be a little bit interesting for someone who really want to go deeper in PHP. And uh, today I will talk about uh, OOP boundaries that we currently have in PHP. And uh, later we will look at some really interesting parts. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, as it was previously mentioned, I act currently at Docker Holding Company, which is famous for livejustmin.com uh, adult site. I guess someone uh, has already tried it. Uh, I really have good experience uh, with um, uh, all stuff regarding computers because it's my passion. And uh, I have even my computer at uh, uh, seven years old. Uh, also, I'm uh, really an enterprise architecture and usually I'm trying to find the best way how to create software to deliver uh, feature faster for business, how to make them uh, easier to use for developers, and of course, transparent <clears throat> uh, for from architecture point of view. And also, I'm also of uh, famous uh, Go LP framework. You can also uh, check it on uh, GitHub and use it if you really need it. Okay, uh, let's switch to our uh, agenda. I will talk about uh, existing boundaries. Uh, we have some limitations on PHP side syntax regarding and uh, uh, PHP design itself has some um, fundamentals from, from having uh, quickly. So this is um, blockers for us. Next, we'll check how can we escape from very bad. And uh, then we proceed to the most interesting part for me about hacking the PHP engine, how can we access native structures, how can we manipulate top codes, etc. And um, finally, we will have a look at uh, PHP extension created in PHP from user land. Yes. OK, uh, let's check uh, our existing uh, object-oriented uh, paradigm boundaries. First one is um, known by most of you. It's an open close principle. And uh, usually, it's uh, very simple that class should be open for extending, but closed for modification, because we really want to protect what's inside. And at the same time, we want to have uh, ability to extend our uh, class with new features. And um, my simple example is a final class uh, with final keyword. And uh, we cannot extend it, this class because um, if we want to create a mock for unit test, for example, and uh, if we try to extend it, I guess um, some of you maybe even know that it's possible. But I really believe that most of you, really it's not possible. And of course, usual answer is no. It's not possible to extend this final class. Yes, and uh, we cannot uh, mock final class. We cannot extend it. Uh, what if we really, if we really want to, for example, create a stop, uh, create a, how can we do it? And uh, let's start uh, with looking for our escapes. And my first escape is to use a file stream wrapper. Um, as you know, PHP has some low-level um, uh, features that give us access to all files. For example, if we're including file, if we have to read it, uh, there is a special uh, software for this called file. And what we can do, we, we can temporarily unregister this file handler. So all operations, including uh, uh, traditional includes or require uh, keywords, will be uh, temporary and handled. And uh, what we can do, we can install our own handler, our own hook, which will be responsible for all low-level operations, for file reading, for file closing, etc. And in this way, we can have uh, access to uh, the source file of uh, PHP code before PHP will analyze and process it. Uh, next step, uh, which is possible to do on this um, particular moment, uh, we can analyze what's inside with the help of uh, token underscore get underscore all function, which is used by PHP to tokenize your source code and uh, create um, <clears throat> stream of tokens from this file. 
And uh, in this stream, we can find for specific uh, tokens, like a final one. And temporary, we can transform the source code in uh, runtime by removing this final keyword. And then we can just return back it to PHP and say, hey, please compile this code again, but uh, without this final keyword. And PHP will trust us. Uh, second escape, which is a little bit more advanced, but also interesting, is uh, to utilize a stream filter uh, with include. Uh, idea is pretty the same. Uh, we can register our own stream filter, not a wrapper at this uh, for this case. And uh, we can create a simple test file for, for with uh, just echo, hello world. And please notice that uh, hello world is not uppercase currently. So if we will run it, uh, this, um, this phrase won't be uppercase. What we can do next, we can create a special uh, include with a PHP column uh, filter uh, inside. And uh, we can give a special filter name. In our case, it's a string to upper, which is built in by default in PHP. And then just specify our resource, which will be our initial file, magic PHP. And uh, what will happen at this particular moment, uh, PHP first will read this file then uh, it will apply a string to upper uh, filter, which will make every single letter in our uh, source code uppercase, and then it will execute it. So what we will have in the end is a hello world uppercase. This is very simple uh, use case, but if we talk about possible usages of uh, this um, feature, it's, uh, it can be used for uh, code monkey patching and especially for AOP. And actually, it's, this is how uh, my Go AOP framework actually is implemented. So I'm trying to analyze in runtime uh, how code should be modified in order to add additional uh, logic in your methods, in your classes. Also, we can use this uh, for runtime code analysis. For example, we can uh, verify that potentially no dangerous places in our code before we'll, we will execute it. Uh, also, it's possible to do some kind of uh, sanitization, some uh, um, possible injection of um, <clears throat> uh, validators, and something like that. Uh, also, we can use this feature for runtime protection. We can, uh, for example, distribute our um, PHP code uh, in uh, encrypted form. And uh, our filter will be responsible, for example, for reading this information and decrypting files before uh, send them to PHP. So this can be also used for <clears throat> emulation of tools like IonCube. And uh, I guess we can have more tricks, like a simple one starting from final keyword removal. And uh, it's not limited uh, to transforming PHP code, but um, even more. Uh, next escape uh, is to try to control PHP internal structures. And uh, let's have a look at uh, how our typical class is represented uh, inside PHP. And uh, for this, we have this send class entry structure. And it has this very interesting field called uh, SE score flex. I'm really curious if we can somehow uh, manipulate this field because uh, from my experience, this field stores all necessary information regarding final keyword, regarding abstract, et cetera, et cetera. So probably if we can manipulate it, we can do it in right time. But um, can we somehow patch the structure? Um, at the current moment, it's impossible because PHP has a lot of um, boundaries and one of them immutable PHP structures, which was designed uh, just because PHP is not only interpreter, but also kind of compiler. And this means that when you're trying to uh, discuss um, uh, what is PHP interpreter and compiler, you should uh, reply with uh, uh, assumptions that uh, we have both parts in, inside PHP. Let's have a look how uh, we can run our PHP application and what's happening uh, under the hood. Okay, we have our PHP script and we want to uh, run it. 
So next step, uh, which is uh, executed by Zend Engine, is uh, parsing phase. We are analyzing what uh, what is what is stored inside our PHP script. Then we need to create an abstract syntax tree and uh, compile uh, the syntax tree into uh, something that can be used by PHP engine. And this is uh, known as a OP codes. And uh, Zend engine can execute uh, such OP codes in runtime and uh, generate an output from our script. But if we will run the same script again, um, not in CLI mode, of course, but uh, in, uh, for example, in FPM or in built-in server, then we can notice a big difference when OP cache is enabled, just because we don't have this parse, parse anymore. And instead, we have this uh, load OP cache uh, construction, which is used to uh, load from shared memory all necessary information about our script and send it directly to engine for execution. But really interesting fact about OP codes uh, that if we compile them, then code cannot be changed in runtime. And uh, for PHP version 8, we have even just-in-time uh, compilers uh, available inside PHP as a part of uh, OP cache. And uh, this produce uh, even not OP, OP codes, but machine representation of your code. Uh, let's check what, uh, what is inside our OP cache. It's a, just a fixed size uh, of shared memory block, uh, which can be accessed from uh, different uh, processes. And uh, usually, it contains uh, all binary structures inside it, uh, which are by default immutable. Uh, immutable is immutability is required uh, to avoid any uh, synchronization uh, operations inside PHP because if we will have uh, two independent scripts trying to update one memory block, we can have blocks, we can have um, probably issues with memory allocation, memory defragmentation, and OP cache was designed uh, to be append only. So we can just add more and more entries to it until it will be filled. And if it's filled, no more records can be stored inside OP cache. Um, let's check what's inside this OP cache. First, uh, we have uh, file functions uh, that are stored like an array. And uh, array is represented by a hash table, uh, special structure. Uh, also, we have all our classes stored in OP cache. Also, we have all information about scripts, uh, which is uh, OP array. And uh, also, we use OP cache to, um, to have more efficient uh, usage for strings, which are internal, and for arrays, which are immutable. And uh, there is also some um, meta information regarding system ID, etc., which is used by OP cache to verify that this particular version of OP cache is uh, compatible with our PHP runtime, because if a uh, version of OP cache is different from our current environment, then uh, better not to use it or regenerate it. Uh, this immutable, immutable uh, OP cache improves PHP performance a lot because we don't need to create it, uh, to parse structures uh, everywhere. We don't need to analyze source code. We can just use OP cache from shared memory and uh, execute it. But uh, at the same time, we have some restrictions. And one of them, we cannot simply change our class uh, by uh, removing methods or adding new one. Uh, for example, in some uh, languages and uh, even in JavaScript, it's possible to uh, dynamically uh, add uh, some methods to your um, class via prototype uh, heading or something similar. Also, we cannot change uh, inheritance at all. So no parent class can be uh, replaced. No interfaces can be added, uh, changed in runtime. And of course, uh, all our traits, uh, which are declared in compile time, uh, cannot be changed in runtime, of course, just because all information is already processed in compile time. Uh, 
And uh, of course, um, PHP core developers are not really interested in providing API to us developers to access this very sensitive uh, and intimate part of PHP. So uh, low level access to this memory is restricted. But uh, it's possible to do it with uh, extensions like RunKit, uh, user operation handler, et cetera, and uh, probably this uh, that engine. Um, let's check another one boundary. It's a language limit. For example, what if we want to have an operator overloading? Uh, it's a specific case of polymorphism when uh, different operators uh, have different implementations and uh, we can do our own handling. For, for example, uh, let's uh, check this example. We have one matrix and another matrix. And uh, from, uh, from our experience, it's very natural to have a matrix um, addition, have matrix uh, multiplication because there are some rules defined uh, in, uh, uh, for matrix additions. But unfortunately, if we try to do like this, um, before PHP version 8, we will have this PHP notice about object of class matrix could not be converted to number, which is really strange. And if we run it, we will have even result, which will be three, integer. Real weird situation. PHP uh, started from PHP version 8. Um, message is a little bit pleasant. We have this uncode type error and supported operand types matrix mul uh, multiplication on int, which is really better. But still, um, we cannot uh, do multiplica multiplication of our matrix. And this is because PHP doesn't support uh, operator overloading for objects. Uh, there is only uh, RFC for this to implement this feature and make it eventually available for developers. So we can, for example, override handling for money objects, for, uh, for example, for vectors, for matrices, etc. But if we check uh, this from PHP side, it's possible to implement. And this is where our interesting part uh, uh, starts right now, hacking the PHP engine. First, we need some tool to use it. And uh, for that engine, we will use a foreign function interface, which was implemented first in PHP version 7.4. And the uh, main feature that it provides, it allows us to call C functions natively from PHP side, which is really awesome. Also, we can define C data types and uh, consume it from PHP side just uh, in the same way like uh, we can do in C language. And also, it opens a way how to, uh, opens a way to write PHP extensions because uh, now we are not limited uh, with our uh, PHP and C knowledge. We can just create a PHP extension from from user land without thinking too much about how to write it properly in C language. And uh, as an additional bonus, uh, headers can be preloaded by uh, PHP to optimize uh, parsing time during server startup. And uh, let's mm, check one idea. What if you will use PHP's FE5 to access PHP? Right, why not? And uh, this idea was so cool. Uh, and I have even discussed this with uh, Dmitry Stogov and Nikita Popov during PHP Russia conference. And they were so surprised and puzzled at the same time. And uh, then Dmitry Stogov has even said, oh, it looks like I have invented nuclear bomb for you. Please don't do it. But of course, we are really interested in uh, doing this on user land side. So this is how this uh, that engine library was born. And uh, it provides uh, API very similar to reflection API. Uh, you can find uh, classes like reflection. Inside, it provides all the little bindings to native PHP structures like uh, Zval, like Zen class entry, Zen function, and much more. 
And what is really interesting, we have full, full control, so we can manipulate PHP itself in runtime, which is so cool and so amazing to do it. But um, this using FFI in PHP, of course, you should expect a lot of memory leaks, segmentation faults. So it's not production ready. Uh, it's very dangerous. So please consider this as an experimental feature and uh, just proof of concept. And now uh, let's check again how can we make our existing final class non-final with our Z engine. Returning back to our Zen class entry structure and uh, this particular uh, SE underscore flex field, we can now manipulate it. Let's check how can we do it. First, we need to initialize uh, that engine library, which is uh, uh, necessary to access all internal data from PHP itself. And uh, then we can create our reflection class, extend it a little bit, and give it name of our final class, and just write set final false. And starting from this point, we can even extend it so PHP uh, will think that our final class is not final anymore. And uh, if we check a uh, parent class for our child, it will be final class. So you, you can see that a final class is not final anymore. And uh, under the hood, we are manipulating uh, this exact uh, field in uh, the end class entry structure. And we are just adding and removing uh, the end ACC final flag from from this um, integer field. This is how it works. But it's a very simple example. And uh, my idea, what if we can create PHP extensions with that engine directly from user land? Of course, we really want to do it because we have uh, all access to low level data. We have access to PHP itself. Why not? And I would I would like to start with a, a PHP extension with operator overloading. Uh, you can check this uh, native PHP matrix library uh, in my GitHub repository, and uh, it's built on top of that engine. And it, yes, it's first ever PHP Zorland extension. So you can check how you can now create PHP extensions from PHP. And under the hood, it uh, hooks into the specific Zen object do operation hook uh, to overload operators for matrices. For matrices. And also, we are uh, really interested in uh, comparison of our two uh, matrix matrices, and this is why we also want to override Zen object uh, compare zeros hook. Okay, let's see how. Typical PHP object looks like from internal side. It's a very simple structure. You can see that we have only several fields inside it, uh, like uh, uh, handle, uh, GC, uh, we have properties, table, and we have very interesting uh, <coughs> handlers field, which is then object handlers type. And this particular field is very interesting because it provides us a lot of interesting opportunities. We can do a lot of interesting stuff just uh, by looking at uh, internal parts. We can override how we uh, how we would like to cast our object. How can we apply count function on it? We can override uh, debug information. We can override some more um, some more hooks but uh, what we need to override is then object do operation hook this hook is called every time uh, if uh, we trying to do some operation on objects and by default it's optional so uh, php not use it uh, at all uh, inside until it's defined and if it's defined then our hook can be responsible for all the level operations. And for this, uh, we will receive OP code from PHP. We will receive a pointer uh, where our result should be stored. And we will receive first operand and second operand as uh, arguments. 
And uh, that engine wraps all this uh, low-level data in um, more useful, more more simple and more usable interface, uh, like uh, object do operation interface. And the uh, U hook uh, will receive this do operation hook instance with all necessary data inside it. It will be first operand, second operand, it will be OP code, and uh, you can just uh, check uh, which OP code was received. And if it's uh, addition, then we can just take uh, left argument, uh, we can take right argument, and we can just uh, uh, do addition of arguments. And in the same way, we can use uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, etc. And uh, let's return back to our um, example. And uh, now we will do the same. We have the same uh, line as previously, but now we have uh, do operation hook installed. And starting from this moment, we can see that PHP now finally can do uh, operator overloading from user land. We can override uh, additions. We can see that matrices uh, were multiplied as well. So really good. Okay, um, next example, it will be another one extension regarding immutable objects. I guess um, some of you are really uh, curious if it's possible to have immutable objects in PHP. And of course, by default, uh, it's not available from uh, vanilla PHP because uh, this is not implemented. This is why I have created uh, this Lisa Chenka mutable object library. Again, it's built on top of the engine. Uh, it hooks into uh, several uh, Zen object handlers to prevent runtime modification of properties and protects on a very low level from changes uh, our object from outside. So if our object is implementing immutable interface, it cannot be changed in runtime at all, except in constructor and static properties. Uh, to implement this, we need uh, only uh, three handlers. Uh, again, uh, we want to uh, change uh, handler for writing property. And we want to, to make sure that uh, this property cannot be updated uh, from different places and it's only allowed to do it from constructor. Also, we need to override this uh, interesting uh, hook, which is called uh, get property Peter. Peter. It's very tricky, but um, usually it's used when we are changing our field in object indirectly. For example, this field plus plus. In this case, we have first uh, pointer to our field, and then it will be incremented. And also, we want to have our custom unset property hook installed for such objects just to prevent, uh, prevent uh, property from being unset. And uh, inside our field write um, handler, we are going to call debug backtrace to collect information about, um, <clears throat> about place which was uh, from from which uh, our particular write operation was called. And if it's not constructor, our own constructor, or it's not a static uh, call, then we can throw logic exception that it's not allowed to manipulate <coughs> uh, our immutable object in runtime. And also for field pointer and field answer, we want just to throw an exception because we don't really uh, want to have some changes. And now uh, we can check in a simple, a very simple example. We have our immutable class, which implements immutable interface. We have this public string value inside it. And uh, we have a constructor, which is used to initialize this value. And uh, next, we are going to create a new instance of immutable value by giving hello. And uh, then, uh, we are going to try to update Vela with uh, oops Vela. And our result will be like this. First, you can see that uh, we have created uh, our mutable object string is uh, hello indeed. But then uh, when we are trying to update this field directly, uh, we will see fatal error from PHP uh, stating that immutable object could be modified only in constructor or static methods. This is how it works. And uh, 
it's possible to change this well via reflection, via closure binding. So no advanced features will work uh, against this. And uh, my last example will be about, um, not but really interesting about shared objects. And uh, it's uh, stated that PHP was designed to be shared nothing. And uh, it's really cool uh, <clears throat> to have uh, this concept because uh, if we don't have anything to share, of course, it's much easier to, to scale our application because we'll have almost linear model. We can have more PHP workers. We can have more PHP instances running uh, in uh, pools. And uh, this model is really good because if we can uh, compare this to Java application or any other compiled uh, version of um, languages, uh, they can have single point of failure. For example, for Java, it can be null pointer exception, and your entire application can go down just because of uh, one small part of your application will be broken. And for PHP, we will have just one single request failing, but uh, remaining uh, requests will be uh, uh, processed without any troubles, which is really nice. Uh, also, the idea is really good because we don't need to, uh, to know about inter-process communication. We don't need to know about uh, primitives like uh, mutexes, semaphores, etc. And of course, it tolerates human errors. We can uh, forget uh, to clean resources which uh, were previously allocated like uh, to close descriptor, to free memory. And in compiled uh, languages, it's usually a very big, uh, it's a really big trouble to always think about how to free resources and do not to uh, do not uh, forget about <clears throat> freeing them. But question is, can our simple variables survive somehow HTTP request boundary? And uh, usually, Answer is no, because PHP was designed to be shared nothing. But at the same time, we have some interesting tricks in PHP itself, which we'll check. But if you want to start uh, something new, first we need to <laughs> finish something. And uh, usually, uh, it means that PHP from this point will be uh, not sharing nothing, but it will be something really different. OK, uh, let's check one more structure, which is uh, available inside PHP. It's called uh, Zend model entry. And uh, usually, it has several uh, important fields like size, API version, debug uh, mode, uh, trade safety enabled, disabled name of our entry. Also, we have a version inside it. And it's really interesting that we have uh, these two fields inside the structure. Uh, first, describes how much globals uh, do we have. And second, points to this particular memory. And uh, with FFI, again, we can emulate registration of Zend extension from user land. Let's see how can we do it. First, we are going to allocate our Zend model entry. And uh, this is our um, structure, which will be uh, used by PHP as a, a traditional PHP extension like uh, memcache, like, uh, I don't know, um, <clears throat> Redis or something like that. And then we need to give it a name. We can uh, initialize uh, our model with persistent flag. Then we need to provide some uh, low-level information for PHP itself regarding uh, persistent mode, regarding API version, debug mode, and uh, thread safety. And uh, what we will do, we will use globals size and global PTR fields to allocate our own persistent memory from PHP. And for this, uh, we should call core new uh, and give it global type. And also, we should specify persistent. So in this case, our memory will be allocated and uh, won't be collected by PHP itself. So it will survive PHP uh, request boundary. And uh, also, we need to register uh, our 
current model in PHP by calling then register model X function and give it address of our um, uh, structure in memory. After this, we need just to stop our model and uh, finally a working extension. So we are now able to access uh, model registry global variable via FFI. This model registry variable stores information about our previously located Zen model entry inside it. And uh, inside the structure, we have our pointer to allocated persistent memory in the global hospital field. And uh, use this um, area and data structure between requests. Voila. OK, uh, to give you a working example, I have this PHP shared data extension uh, library created uh, also on top of uh, that engine. And, uh, it defines real Zen model entry structure. And uh, it just creates a very simple shared structure, which can be shared between uh, several requests. And as an example, uh, we are going to create our new extension, which will have shared data name. And we are going to allocate just 10 unsigned integers uh, for our extension to manipulate them. And uh, we can access uh, after registration and of course after startup, we, we can access our globals pointer and uh, we can change uh, our integers inside this global area. And uh, if we uh, run the script several times, uh, for example, in, uh, um, in FPM or in a built-in um, PHP server, we can see a picture like this. Uh, we have our object, and as you can see, every single item has uh, increment numbers are still growing. So if you will hit refresh again, one number will be increased again. So it's a uh, real sharing of data without any serialization, without any unserialization. It's direct memory access to shared data. And of course, PHP is uh, known as a, a high level language. And uh, we uh, also have uh, assembly language and machine languages. So what if we will have uh, execution of machine code in PHP itself? Uh, and uh, yes, it's also possible to do it uh, with FFI. We need just allocate uh, memory with uh, specific um, fields and a specific um, <clears throat> mode because uh, for execution of our code, we need to have executable bit of memory to be present. Next, uh, we should initialize the internal function structure and prepare all information like number of arguments, uh, information about arguments, flags. Uh, in our case, we are going to make uh, this function public. And also we need to uh, provide a link to executable part of memory uh, to this handler field. And uh, then we can just create a new reflection value, uh, create a pointer from this, our, from this function and add our new function directly directly to given class. Let's check uh, how it looks like from PHP side. First, we are going to define some very basic uh, <clears throat> application. Uh, it's Hello World application written in machine codes. And uh, then we are going to create an uh, internal method in, inside PHP directly from our machine code. And then we will run it just uh, like a simple internal method call. And uh, we will have a result from first ever assembly method in PHP. And it's really cool to have uh, access to PHP from very low level. And this opens a very uh, interesting possibilities. For example, we can access uh, uh, our um, modern hardware for any advanced stuff. We can do machine learning in PHP, but uh, we can uh, write libraries which will operate 
uh, with hardware in a close way, uh, we can do <coughs> uh, and we can write our own PHP extensions and the uh, bindings uh, to C libraries. And also, uh, we can have speed comparable to C code from PHP because we can have we can define our code, we can compile it it's, um, uh, just in time compilation and Finally, PHP will be compiled language and will have uh, speed comparable to Lua or to WebAsm. Uh, what to expect more from uh, my uh, researches from my library? I really want to have a stable API for userland PHP extensions and uh, Dmitry Stogov uh, is really supporting this. So most probably he will provide uh, some bindings uh, from uh, from PHP itself, and uh, this uh, API will be consumed by that engine to give you ability to write PHP extensions natively. Uh, also, I really want to have uh, OP code manipulation and transformation just uh, for my aspect-oriented library because uh, it will be very good way how to access uh, this data, how to manipulate it in runtime, and I can change behavior of your classes in runtime. Also, I want to have real shared objects. For example, uh, uh, Symfony application has a container, and uh, we really want uh, to have this container between requests with all hot connections, with all hot services, in it without spending our time for lazy, for lazy loading, some objects, etc., etc. So we can benefit more from shared objects, but they should be immutable at the same time. Also, um, <clears throat> uh, we can have some very performant libraries uh, utilizing uh, hardware for computation. Uh, this is especially important for machine learning or, uh, or uh, any <clears throat> Uh, 3D renders or something like that. And uh, I guess that's all uh, for today. I really hope that uh, you have enjoyed uh, this uh, presentation. Most probably some of you have um, and, uh, have good questions about the uh, future. And uh, thank you for, for the attention. Also, uh, I have uh, some references and links which can be checked uh, if you really want to see how it's implemented on a very low level. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.